Politics this morning, President Biden encouraging world leaders to invest in cleaner energies. And we're learning more now about the White House's new trillion dollar spending plan. And joining us live to talk about those topics and more is former Florida Senate President Mike Herodopoulos. Mike, good to see you. I hope you had a good weekend. We did, Ryan. Good morning to you. Let's start with the climate summit. There's an ambitious plan for sure, uh, trying to improve some emissions. Uh, where do you see all this? Well, the good news is around the world, the emissions are coming down, and especially here in the United States. Uh, but the big culprits, of course, on uh, carbon emissions is China, it's roughly twice the number of the United States. But the good news is, as you mentioned, uh, there was a, a summit uh, held on Earth Day recently, and then all the major nations participated and all pledged to reduce their carbon emissions starting as early as 2025, with the United States promising to cut carbon emissions in half by 2030. And we'll start seeing more details now from the Biden administration's new uh, spending plan. It's going to be another $1.5 trillion, so another big price tag with this. Well, I tell you what, they know how to spend money in Washington, D.C., don't they? Uh, the latest one is a $1.5 trillion plan. This is on top of the $1.9 already passed, where that's where you got your $1,400 check. Of course, there's a discussion we've had for weeks now about the infrastructure plan, which only about 6 to 7 percent is actually roads and bridges. And the latest one would be a big expansion in general things like free community college, free uh, what we call child care, of course, free, um, you name it, universal pre-K, and even 12 weeks paid vacation for family leave as well. And so it, that has about a $1.5 trillion price tag. A lot of people are wondering what exactly that will be paid for by. Most people expect, of course, much higher taxes. We also saw some things that were talked about during the campaign coming out now. Court packing, although the president has backed away from this a little bit, but others in his party want to move forward in D.C. statehood. Yeah, these are pretty um, out there ideas. Uh, Biden took a very tepid case on this during the campaign trying to win votes, but he is pushing hard for the D.C. statehood. It's already passed the House of Representatives, and in order to pass the United States Senate to be the 51st state, it would have to get 51 votes, of course, in the United States Senate. But to get that, they have to break the filibuster. This is not one of those budget reconciliation things we talked about. This means you'd actually have to have 60 senators. So the likelihood of that is very small. But there's still that thing out there, of course, as you mentioned, on court packing. That is a totally different scenario. But we'll have to see where that comes out after the six-month anniversary of the commission that the president put together. Let's finish about 30 seconds on the border crisis. Where do we stand there? Well, the bad news is it continues to plague uh, those border states, especially Arizona and, of course, Texas. Recently in Arizona, they've called out the National Guard in Arizona, and actually both Democrat United States senators from Arizona supported this measure. And so the emergency situation seems to be getting worse. And TikTok, unfortunately, Camilla Harris, who's in charge of this, still has not yet visited the border. Mike, got to leave it there at 830. We'll uh, have you back. We'll talk some state issues. Big week with the final week of the legislative session. Thank you, my friend. Looking forward to it, Ryan. Thank you. All right, sounds good. Mike, we'll talk to him at 8.30, Daniel.